Okay, so this is question number five from October, November 2010, paper four, variant one, and it's part C of the question, C part two, and it's kind of like mixing up between probability and cumulative frequency diagrams. Okay, so this question we're asked to we're told that one of the 200 students is chosen at random. So there's 200 students, and this cumulative frequency um, table has been made, okay, related to these 200 students. And we're told that um, these are the heights of 200 students, okay, 200 students say in centimeters. So we can see, for example, what this means is there are no students with a height less than or equal to 130 centimeters. There are 10 students altogether whose heights are less than or equal to 140 centimeters. For example, if you look at this part, there are 165, sorry, there are 115 students whose heights are less than or equal to 165 centimeters and so on. Okay, that's what this means. All right, so that means less than 165 all the way back down to zero. Now, one of the 200 students is chosen at random, and then a second student is chosen at random from the remaining students. Calculate the probability that one has a height greater than 170 centimeters and the other has a height of 140 centimeters or less. So you've got two students. One of them has to have a height which is greater than 170 centimeters. Now there are 145 students out of 200, okay, whose heights are 140, uh, 170 centimeters or less. So that leaves how many students remaining? 55. So the probability of a student having a height greater than 170 centimeters is going to be 55 out of 200. Right? Okay, so imagine that's, uh, you know, the first person picture is going to be 55 out of 200 students times. There's another student, okay, who has a height of 140. You can find the probability that the second student picked has a height of 140 centimeters or less. Well, there's only 10 students whose heights are 140 centimeters or less. So you've got to do times 10 over. Now, one of the students has already been picked. So there's 199 students left. That's one scenario. The other scenario is that... The first student you picked has a height of less than one four, less than 140 centimeters, so that would be 10 over 200. And the second student you picked has a height greater than 170 centimeters, which would be 55 over 199. What you'll notice actually here is these two are exactly the same value, okay? Because you have 55 over 200, so the numerators are going to be 55 times 10. The denominator is going to be 200 times 199. And this, the numerators are the same, what can multiply. So another way of doing this is just do one of them and say, okay, it's going to be two times that. Two times 55 over 200 times 10 over 199. See, what, what, you've, what you do is if you only choose one of them, is that what you did? Just choose one of them? Yes. Yeah. If you just choose one of them, what you're saying is you're finding the probability that the first student has a height greater than 170 centimeters, and the second student has a height less than... Um, 140 centimeters. That's what you're actually doing. You're not finding the probability that one of them has a greater than 170 and the other. So it doesn't specify the first has to be, you know, taller than 170 and the second has to be shorter than 140. It specifies one of them. So it could be either way around. So you have to, it's like when you have a, a tree diagram. If you think about a tree diagram, you'll, you can say either they're, you know, greater than 170 or less than 140. Okay, so greater than 170 or less than 140, okay? You're going to have to take these two. This is going to be like greater than 140. Okay, that's, that's greater than 170 and that's less than 140. And that's less than um, 140 and that would be greater than 170. So you're going to take both of these into account. The first is greater than 170 and the second is less than 140. Or well, the first, his height is less than 140, and the second is greater than 170. Okay, so you're taking both of these outcomes together. You don't have to make a tree diagram, you can do it mentally, but you have to remember 
that that is how to do it. You have to take into account both of the cases. So then you take our calculator and you just put that calculation in there. So you can say two times uh, you know, 55 over 200 times you know, 10 divided by 199. Okay, so that should give you your answer, which is 11 over 398. Give your answers a fraction. So 11 over 398. Okay, so 11 over 398. Okay, your answer was probably, yeah, okay, it's twice that. Is that a half of this? Okay, so there we have this question answered. Is that clear?